Okay, let's talk planning. First of all, excuse my notes, but this is such an important step and it's the most skipped that I don't want to leave anything out. And I've discovered through filming that every time I go, my brain thinks, my mouth says, um, so maybe this will help <laughs> alleviate some of that. This is planning is the most important step and it's the most skipped. I think people just get so overwhelmed. Um, it, and it is, especially when you're starting out, it's a little overwhelming, but we're gonna take it step by step because like the old adage says, you uh, either plan well or plan to fail. So first thing, let's, talk about, let's make a list of veggies your family eats. Think about dinners you make. Um, think about the ingredients in there. Do you use a lot of it or do you use just a few? Uh, do you want some for just fresh eating? These are things you need to think about. After you have your list, I'm gonna show you mine. This one's my list. Can you see it, bed? There you go, there's my list. Next, you need to know your frost hardiness. Um, which zone you live in. Where we live, where I live, is a six. If you don't know what your zone is, Google it. Um, after, if you are picking up plants from a nur local nursery or bulk seeds, they are already um, picked to grow in that zone. So you don't need to worry about that so much. But if you're picking up packets like this, you might need to check the zone. Um, or if you're ordering plants, check the zone. Um, this little packet of flowers, if you can see here, can you see that? It's kind of tiny. It grows all over the United States, but it tells us right here in Southwest Utah that we are blue. So we would plant this May to June. Okay. So if you have something that is on your list, but not in your zone, you might as well just cross it off the list because don't waste your money. Buy it from the store. Buy it from a farmer's market. Okay, um, cool weather plants. Next, what we're gonna do is cool weather plants. Cool weather plants are plants that you eat the roots, the leaves, or the stems of. Things like broccoli, cabbage, onions, peas, spinach, lettuce, turnips, radishes, beets, carrots, chard, parsnips, onions, potatoes. If you didn't catch all that, don't worry, I'm going to put a list in the comments. Now, go down on your list, your big list of stuff, and you're going to write C next to anything that's cool weather. So, peas is a C. Beets is a C. Oh, my table is bumpy. Potatoes is a C. Onions, C. Carrots, C. Got it? C for cool weather. Warm weather plants, these are plants that fruit is the edible part and is the object of desire. Now, like tomatoes, tomatoes, peppers, corn, beans, cucumbers, squash. Next to these plants, we're going to write a W. Okay, so back on my list, I'm just gonna write down W. And you can see I have more warm weather plants than I do cool weather plants. Cool weather plants, warm weather plants, it refers to the time of year you're going to plant them. Okay, I'm gonna have a list down, a chart and list down below in the comments so um, that uh, it will be easier if you can see it better. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, now let's talk companion planting. What in the world, right? Companion plants are what Mr. Rogers' hope was for everyone. They're good neighbors. When planted together, they provide a number of benefits such as increasing harvest, pest protection, soil conditioning, stuff like that. I'm going to put a chart in the comments. And what I would like you to do is to go ahead and copy and paste that into Word. After you've done that, print it out. Get a highlighter, 
highlight the things that are on your list. Okay? Now, after that, you're going to need a lined piece of paper. Um, and we're going to draw out your garden spot. Go ahead and put those those cool wet, or the companion plants together. Map it out. Figure out how many rows. You can see my family needs two rows of beans. Uh, one solid row of carrots. Uh, lots of rows of potatoes because if we can't have a potato for dinner, we don't know what to eat. Um, go ahead and take your time and map that out. After you get that, even if you're even if you're doing a garden box, still draw it out, map it out. Now, back to your list. Once you get that done, go back to your list. Okay. Most cool weather plants need direct sow, meaning you you don't need to buy the plants. You buy the seeds and sow them directly into the ground. The exception to this is onions and potatoes. Onions, you'll want to buy starts. Potatoes, you want to buy seed potatoes, okay? And of the warm weather plants, tomatoes and peppers, those are the things you're going to want to buy plants. The rest, you're going to want to direct sow. It's tempting, very, very tempting to buy the plant, but most things don't like their, seed, their roots messed with. And believe me, you'll be ahead of everybody else if you direct sow. Direct sow, meaning you put it directly into the ground. Now, go down your list and write plant or seed. I'm gonna go ahead and hurry and do that. Um, okay, seeds, seed, 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 plant, 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 plant. Dill is a herb. Most herbs you direct sow. Seed, seed potato. Seed, seed. Onions are starts. Means it's an itty bitty baby plant. And seed. Okay, there we have it. Okay, um, now you have a good start and a good plan and the start of a shopping list. Okay, so hopefully you're feeling a little bit more confident in your garden. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, label your map, keep track of it. Put it in a safe place. You're gonna need it later on, it'll be important. Now, next video we're going to talk about uh, picking your garden spot and soil types. I know I've given you a lot of information and a lot of homework to do. So go ahead, take your time and do that. We've got this step by step.